Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Hey, this is just a, a very quick follow-on um, video from the one I put up this morning. Um, after putting that one up, I had a very quick play around uh, to see how easy it would be to add in the code to allow the single wire uh, between the computer and the radio to carry both the serial and the audio. Um, as had been suggested in the comments um, on the uh, on the first video, and um, as it turned out, it was actually um, uh, very straightforward. So, so what we see on the screen here is the WSJT um, software running with a uh, an oscillator, which we'll see in code. I've just got a test oscillator that's sitting on the Teensy, uh, outputting 700 hertz. Um, I've got that the lowest digital setting that I can have in software, but as you can see down here, it's still quite a, a high level, hence it's a very strong signal, but uh, for testing out the logic, it's fine. And uh, once I get more into the radio, uh, that'll be coming from uh, that'll be coming from the line in through the uh, through the digital filters before going back out again. So it'll be a lot different. But suffice to say, uh, this is purely for just testing um, how it's working. So we can see the 700 hertz. Um, if I just go down here to File to Settings and to Audio, you can see there that the sound card for the input and the output um, is this digital audio interface to the Teensy. So the Teensy cable has been set up to be uh, a serial slash MIDI slash um, audio. Uh, you had to have MIDI. Um, and then as soon as that was enabled, uh, it then was presented to the uh, the operating system here as a valid sound card. Uh, and as you can see, it's working perfectly fine. Um, if I uh, go across here to tune, uh, just over here, and I was push the old tune button there, you may hear a very slight tone. It's not very loud because um, it's not amplified, but what I have on the output of the, the Teensy on the uh, head, head shield, I'll say going on the headphone output there, um, I've just got that little speaker just to, for testing purposes there. So that's what's coming out there. Uh, just to prove that there was audio coming back in through the USB port, uh, being routed and then back out the, the headphones. So in terms of um, the software to do that, what I'll do, I'll just um, again just quickly... Uh, nip back to the um, recording software and I'll just very quickly show you that and, and then we'll leave it there. Okay, so just very quickly racing through the additions to the uh, to the software. It didn't take too much. Um, unfortunately with this, this capture software here you don't get to see the menus but under tools if you were to pull that down under USB type here there is an option called serial plus MIDI plus audio. Uh, and that's what I selected to enable that functionality um, on the on the Tensi. Anyway, so uh, on the Tensi itself, uh, I'm not going to labour too much, but it wasn't too much. Just adding in the uh, the library that comes developed for the Tensi, uh, and then just um, had to create a couple of objects. Um, had to enable the uh, the audio shield there, or in fact, it gets enabled down here. But we have the um, the uh, the SGTL 5000, the the, the codec board. Um, I'm just going to call that generically audio shield. Um, in terms of the audio input USB, that's one of the um, one of the objects for that. Uh, I'm just going to call it audio input USB. Uh, a test oscillator there. So I'm just going to create a digital test oscillator to output a sine wave uh, that gets fed to the, uh, the WSJT software for test purposes only. So uh, that's the audio synth waveform sine. Um, a couple of outputs, one output for the USB, uh, and the other output is through the iTool, through the, uh, the, the audio board, um, that is the, the headphones. Um, you then have to create some connections uh, to basically sort of wire that up, so to speak. So I've got the output of the test oscillator here, the zero output, going to the output USB left. Um, because it's a mono uh, uh, oscillator here, uh, that same output is going to the audio output USB right channel. So that's, like I say, the um, the test 700 hertz going out. Uh, and the other one is the audio input. So that's the uh, that test tone or the transmit tones that are coming from the WSJT software coming in over the USB uh, going out. So the left's going the audio output headphones at the left channel, um, and then. It's going to be a mono radio anyway, so it's here or there, and I'll fix that later on. 
the other option is um, the other uh, connection I had here just for testing was the audio input USB uh, right going to the headphones right. Uh, and then the only other thing to do within the setup function here uh, is the following few lines here. So uh, disable the interrupts for the shield. Uh, audio memory 12 is quite a common uh, value for that. Uh, I need to enable the shield. Uh, that test oscillator to set its amplitude um, to 0.1. If I could go lower, I would, but the options are between 1, say again, between 0 and 1.0, so only 0.1 um, is, is the increment, so I couldn't go any lower for that. Uh, the test oscillator frequency is 700 hertz, um, and then just um, for that headphones, just unmuting those, so for that audio coming from the computer, and then to setting the volume for that headphone at 0.8 and then re-enabling interrupts. And that's it. So again, just purely to, 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 to get that audio running uh, backwards and forwards across um, the USB cable just to, for testing purposes. Uh, now I know how that works. I can then now modify all of this uh, and add all the functionality down here to, to do that phasing uh, using the Hilbert transforms. Uh, one thing I did notice um, as I exited out of the WS um, software, in fact, that's not going to be captured, but I'll just close it down. Uh, when I um, exited out of the WSJT software, um, the audio, the, the computer was still wanting to receive audio and send audio to the um, to the Tensi. Now what I haven't tried is actually just turning the Tensi off to see if it's actually going to default back to the normal computer speakers and the computer microphone. But that'd be something I have to run down. But all I want to do this this very short video was just to sort of show um, the additional, you know, just a few lines of code to enable um, to enable that USB input and output. Okay, cheers all.